I'm assuming your favorite drink of all time is the martini. It is. Okay. It is. And I, I'm just going to mention what's behind you. Well, if I, if anyone would mind, can I, can I show you how to make the world's best yes! martini? Yes. From the master himself. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to recite a poem. Um, <laughs> uh, so here's so the secret to a great martini is. It's gotta be super cold. It's gotta be gin, thank you. Yes, yes. Don't let me, I don't wanna be a, a divisive character even though I've been doing it all night. <laughs> Folks, a, a vodka martini is not a martini. It's not. It's <laughs> I not. hate to tell you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. A gin martini, martinis are supposed to be gin. So when you go to a, a, a bar and you say, can I get a martini and they say vodka or gin, that's on them, they got it wrong. But I'm not <laughs> saying there's anything wrong with a vodka martini, it just, that you asked for a vodka martini, but it's not a real martini. I so, <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'm a jerk. Um, <laughs> so, okay, first things first. When you make a martini, everything's gotta be super, super cold. So your glass, I'm gonna use a Nick and Nora glass tonight, All right. actually. Fair enough. Exactly. Uh, chill the glass. So you gotta put ice in the glass to get it cold. Really what you should do is put it in the freezer. If you can put, a, 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 put your glass in a freezer and get it freezing cold, that's the way to do it. But, Otherwise, do that. And you should normally put water in there and it'll make it colder faster, but get that cold. So now, you wanna get your, uh, you gotta mix it. Now, <laughs> there, there's three kinds of martinis in this world. The world's greatest martini, anybody ever been to Duke's Bar in London? Anybody? Ah, there we go, excellent. <laughs> that's, that's the world's greatest, greatest martini because what they do, Alessandro Palazzi, who's the, the and I dedicate my book to him and my wife, uh, Lori. Lori gets first billing. Yay, yes she does. My yes, bartender Lori. gets second. She is, she's first. And I've got a mea couple for my wife. That, <laughs> okay, I'll say it right now, because she's, I'm gonna cut her off because I know she's gonna write up a, a question about it. I, I put a lot of pictures of my wife and I in the book from our Instagram show. But then when we were putting the book together, the photo editor at the cocktail, at the publishers, didn't like the quality of those, those photos. So oh. they all got purged out except for one yep. that is a picture of my wife tasting this cocktail that she hated <laughs> called the modern cocktail. And it's her going like, ugh. So I thought, oh, yeah, there is there. Yeah, you probably Honey, are you happy with it? Um, <laughs> And it turned out to be the only picture of her in the book. And uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, my dear. <laughs> when the next book comes out, there'll be a much better picture. I, I think it's charming. And thank you, it, it, thank it's, you, Ellie. It captures the, it's beautiful. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, Ellie, that's why I love you. Um, so now, so, okay, so the best martini in the world is a Duke's martini, where they basically put into the, fr into the freezer your gin. This is the gin that I make, called Ardingstall's Brilliant London Eye Gin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but they'll, you put it in the freezer, and it's in the freezer for you know hours and hours. So it's ice cold. The glasses are in the freezer. What he does, he comes out, takes vermouth, puts a little bit of vermouth in the glass, swirls it around to coat the edges, and throws it on the carpet. Gets rid of the, the vermouth, mm -hmm. and then pours in frozen gin, and then gets a big Amalfi lemon, cuts a giant twist, and puts it over the top. And that is a Duke's martini. And they're fantastic, but they are the strongest things in the world because you do not dilute the gin whatsoever. It is all straight gin, no ice, so it will knock you, knock you for a loop. And you're only allowed to have two there. If you have more than two, I was there once and um, two sober, very sober looking uh, businessmen are having a drinks conversation and they're talking, talking. And one guy gets up to go to the bathroom and right over the <laughs> table and passed out. And all of a sudden runs over to the other guy like, how many did you give me? He goes, three, never three, oh, no more than two. <laughs> so those are the strongest. Now what I'm gonna do today is make one, that, that this is my personal favorite um, way to do a martini, because I think it, it's a little friendlier and, uh, and it's not gonna completely kill you. And that is <laughs> to um, use the Alessandro method of making it very dry. So first you gotta put ice into your, into your mixing glass. And I'm a big fan of uh, mix, mixing it. Um, I'm not into the shaken martinis uh, because they, <laughs> a lot of bartenders think they're killing a rat inside of a shaker or something. <laughs> I mean, they really pride themselves and I love it. You know, in a lot of drinks you do need to really shake it, you know, to get it frothy or whatever. But you're really, I don't have a, a, a shaker here, but the way you're supposed to shake a drink is like this. And you're basically what you're, the, the goal is to let the, the liquid hit all four corners mm -hmm. as you're doing it. So you're just rolling it, rolling it, get, making it kind of cold. Um, 
I, I, you know, a lot of people, they always say, well, James Bond likes it shaken, not stirred. And here's why I think that is. I'm just going to try to make an excuse for James Bond. He's a super spy, and he has to have his wits about him. So when you really shake the hell out of a, out of a, a martini, it waters it down. So then he's not as drunk as he could be with a regular oh. martini. See? I love that. Is that theory supported by anyone but no, you? No, that okay. is just my personal theory. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me get Ian Fleming on the phone yeah. and ask him. Um, so, 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 so you got. So I like the mixing glass. I like to to stir it, and it's also more. It's a more beautiful way to do it. So first thing you want to do is get your vermouth, and, and you just want to put literally a drop in there because I can't, I can't do the Alessandro thing of swirling it and, and pushing it out. Although you could actually, if you didn't put ice in here, you could put it in there and, and dump it out. But I like this. So just literally a drop. There we go. Oh, God, it was too big. Um, I'll just have to make a bigger one then. Uh, and then you take your vermouth. And I, I do, do like a three to four ounce uh, one that this is. Uh, I think I, if you count one, two, three, I find that it's usually you get one ounce per count. So let's make it three and a half here. So we go one, two, three, half. There we go. And then it's just there's nothing better than stirring a drink. You know, and, and I like a, a good long spoon. You got to get a great long spoon. But you got to do this for a good minute to two minutes because it's got to be ice, ice, ice cold. So you got your glass getting cold there. You got this getting cold here. And then what we're going to do is um, cut our twist. But do this you know, again because you'll get it nice and cold. Even, it's even better even to put it down so your hand doesn't even warm up the glass, or the mixing glass. So we'll keep that going there. Talk amongst yourselves while we do this. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, so then you can let it sit there. You know, it's, it's, it's getting cold. Now, now cut your lemon. And I'm, who, who likes a dirty martini here? Dirty martini? Yeah. And I'm not judging that. I, I love, I, I, <laughs> I'm judging everything, aren't I? Um, <laughs> what a jerk. Uh, um, you have opinions. I, I, you know I, yourself. I find that for, for me, the, the olives and, and olive juice, it becomes the drink. Mm. And I love gin so much, and if you find the one that you love, I want to highlight that taste. Uh, and so that's why I think a twist is nice, because it just, you express the oil over the top, which I'll show you how to do right now. And it just kind of opens it up and makes it, I like a bright martini. Other people might like a little heavier one, and that, that's what I think you get when you, do a, um, when you do a dirty martini or with an olive. So cut a big twist. There's no excuse for a small twist. You want to get a pretty good sized lemon and go pole to pole. There you go. So you've got a nice size there. And now the key to a twist is not to squeeze it from the, the pith side, but you're squeezing the oil out. See, that's nice and, nice and uh, cloudy there and cold. You're gonna squeeze, you wanna get the oil from the, from the twist onto the surface of, there we go, of the drink. So here we go, pour that out. That's nice and ice cold now. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, see? And now here's the method you want to do. You want to hold it out, so this has got the skin side out, and it's just up over the top. And what happens is, whether you see it come out or not, you will see in the light, as I can see, you've got oil on top now. And then what you want to do is you want to rub the edge, get it all around there. So there's some places that they say you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to go down so that you get a little bit of oil, lemon juice on your, or lemon oil on your fingers. I'm not a fan of that, but I just did it, so there you go. <laughs> and you put it in, and there you go. That is a, what I consider to be the perfect martini.